Welcome to this video. And in this video, we look at the Hamiltonian method as an optimization method of control system or a method of obtaining the optimal solution of a control problem. The Hamiltonian method. Suppose we are to optimize a function we have to obtain or to optimize a function j, a function of the integral t naught to t f of v, a function v of x of t, u of t and t dt, given the system equation defined by x derivative of t is a function f of the states, the input and time with the boundary conditions of the system given. To formulate the optimization problem, we form the Hamiltonian function H. We formulate the Hamiltonian function H, what we also call the Pont regime H function defined by H is a function of v of x of t, u of t and t plus lambda, we introduce the Lagrangian multiplier, lambda transposed of t of f x of t, u of t and t. We formulate the Hamiltonian based on the performance index equation V, a function of X of T, U of T and T, and then plus the Lagrangian transpose multiplied by the function of the function F of X of T, U of T and T. Once we have the Hamiltonian function, we proceed to form the state equation, the cost state equation and the control equation as follows. The state equation is defined by x derivative of t is equals to partial derivative of h with respect to lambda. And this is what we call the state equation. Number two, we formulate the cost state equation based on lambda one, the lambda derivative is the negative of the partial derivative of h with respect to x. And this is the cost state equation. Lastly, we form the control equation defined by the partial derivative of h with respect to u is equals to zero. And this is the control equation. With the simultaneous set of equations as the state equation, the cost state equation and the control equation, we can proceed to determine their solutions and through that determine the optimal values of the states, the optimal values of our control input U of T and of lambda as a function of T. Of course, the lambda component is not important but it helps us to determine the optimal values of the states and the input of our given system. That means in a nutshell, the Hamiltonian method involves formulation of the Hamiltonian function from the performance index function and the state equation multiplied by the transpose values of lambda from which we formulate the state equation as X derivative of T is partial derivative of h with respect to lambda, then the lambda derivative is equal to the negative of the partial derivative of h with respect to x and partial derivative of h with respect to u is equal to zero. If we can solve for the set of simultaneous equations, then we can obtain 
the optimal values of the states and input for our given system. We can put this in form of an example. Suppose we are to optimize the function, we are to optimize the function j given by a half the integral from zero to t of u squared of t dt given the system defined by x1 derivative of t is equals to x2 of t and x2 derivative of t is equals to u of t subject to the boundary conditions x of zero is equals to one two and x of two is equals to one zero we are to obtain the optimal values of the states, the input given the optimization index or the performance index J defined by J in that equation of, an equi of a system defined by the state equation of X1 derivative and X2 derivative in form of these equations, subject to the boundary conditions of X1 and X2 given and using the Hamiltonian method. It's good to note that our function v, a function of the states, the input and time is equal to a half u squared of t, the function contained in the performance index. Our f1 is the function x2 of t, and our function f2 is the function u of t from which we can formulate the Hamiltonian H, which will be equal to a half U squared plus lambda one of T, of course, the function of T, lambda one of T, let's write this differently. So this is T plus lambda one of T multiplied by X two of T plus lambda two of T multiplied by u of t and that is our Hamiltonian from which we proceed to formulate the state equations as follows x1 derivative x1 derivative x1 derivative of t is equals to partial derivative of h with respect to lambda one, which is equals to, we differentiate h with respect to lambda one to get x2 of t. x2 derivative of t is partial derivative of h with respect to lambda two, and this one will give us u of t. Give us u of t. Then lambda one derivative is the negative of partial derivative of h with respect to x one, which will be equal to negative. You differentiate with respect to x one. You notice that h is not a function of x one and that will be equal to zero, from which we can write lambda one derivative is equals to zero. Lambda two derivative of T is the negative of the partial derivative of H with respect to X two, which will be equal to, with respect to X two, we get lambda one, and this is negative lambda one of T. That means lambda two derivative of T is negative lambda one of T. Next we get partial derivative of H with respect to U is equals to zero. If we differentiate with respect to U, we'll get U of T plus lambda two of T is equals to zero. So our U of T plus lambda two of T is equals to zero, from which our U of T 
will be negative lambda two of t. So we want us to call this equation one. Equation one, this as equation two, equation three, equation four, and equation five. We can obtain the solutions for the five set of simultaneous equations, subject them to the boundary conditions, and through that obtain the optimal values of the states and the input as follows. If we take equation three, equation three, where lambda one derivative of t is equals to zero, integrating both sides will get lambda one of t to be a constant C1. We can write lambda one of t is equals to C1. From equation four, lambda two derivative is negative lambda one. So we can write lambda two derivative will be equal to negative lambda one, which is negative C1, from which lambda two of t will be equal to negative C1t plus C2. Then from equation five, u of t is lambda two of t, u of t is negative lambda two of t, which gives us u of t to be equal to C1t minus C2. C1 T minus C2. From equation two, X2 derivative of T is U of T. X2 derivative of T is U of T, which is C1 T minus C2, from which X2 of T will be equal to a half C1 T squared minus c2t plus c3. Finally, from equation one, x1 derivative of t is equals to x2. So x1 derivative of t is x2, which is a half c1t squared minus c2t plus c3, from which x1 of t will be a sixth C1t cubed minus a half C2t squared plus C3t plus C4. Then we subject this to the boundary conditions. X1 of zero is equals to X1 of zero is given as one and X2 of zero as two. So X1 of zero x1 of zero where there is t we substitute with zero we'll get this to be c4 which is equals to one then into the equation of x2 x2 of zero is equals to we'll get c3 and that is equals to two that means c4 is equals to one and c3 is equals to two from the boundary condition of x1 of two is equals to x1 of 2 is equals to 1. This will give us 4 over 3 c1 minus 2 c2 plus 4 plus 1 is equals to 1, from which we can write 4 c1 minus 6 c2 is equals to negative. 12. Next, you can write x2 of 2 is equals to, so this one will give us 2c1 minus 2c2 plus c3, c3 is equals to 2, is equals to 0 from which you multiply all these equations by two, we'll get 4C1 minus 4C2 to be equal to negative four. 
if we subtract the second one from the first, we'll get negative 2C2 to be equal to negative 8, and our C2 will be 4. C2 will be equal to 4. Then our C1 will be equal to C1 will be equal to 1. C1 will be equal to 1 from which the optimal values of the states will be x1 optimal of t will be a sixth c1, c1 is one, that means a sixth t cubed minus a half c2, that gives us two t squared minus 2t squared minus, this is plus C3t, that is plus 2t, plus C4, and C4 is 1, plus 1. Our x2 optimal will be equal to x2 optimal following the same procedure will be equal to a half c1 t squared c1 is one that means a half t squared minus C two t, C two is four minus four t plus C three, and C three is equals to two. Finally, our u of t optimal will be equal to u of t is C one t minus C two, which will be equal to C1 C1 is C1 is 1. Let's confirm from this that C1 is 1. 2C1 will be equal to minus 2 plus 2C2, which is 2C2 will be 8. That C1 will be 3. Sorry, C1 is equals to 3. C1 is equals to 3. That means the equation here will be. 3 over 2 t squared, and this will be 3 t squared. Then our u of t will be 3 t minus c2, which is 4. And those are the optimal values of the state and input of our system based on the Hamiltonian function of our given system. Otherwise, that is the end of my presentation. And thank you for watching this video.